everyone welcome to our pre-calculus pre-decoding video this is about finding the rational zero of polynomials so this lesson will investigate little deeper about the polynomial uh, real zeros we will discuss about a couple of theories and how to find out the how to find out the rational zeros of the polynomials all of them are related to that but uh, you will see you will notice that this is somewhat uh, uh, tons of theory based here but of course we will find out some easier uh, technique also uh, which is workable let's look at the agenda first of all we will need to have the idea about the number th numbers like uh, what are these kind of numbers that kind of numbers so we will need that clear concept then rational zero theorem we will discuss about that irreducible quadratic uh, factors solving the polynomial equations for finding for finding the uh, zeros okay so let's look <coughs> these are the set of numbers what are the natural numbers what are the integer numbers you will you will know it from here natural numbers is denoted by n yeah, that is like little difference the, uh, in this n you can see the presentation representation of this n natural number is 0 1 2 3 etc this is called 4 5 6 these are called a natural number another name of natural number is called a counting number like we count by using these numbers by using these numbers uh, notice that negative number is not included in the natural number natural number is uh, just only this then integer number is negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 including this uh, natural number these are called the integer number rational number is rational number is uh, half minus 2 by 3 2.5 etc including this number then these are uh, rational number suppose 2 2 can be also a rational number because 2 divided by 1 we can write so that's a fraction form so that is uh, that can be a that can be a rational number then real algebraic like root 2 mi minus uh, root 5 these are these all are real and algebraic this all are real and algebraic and of course these are real but irrational number this root 2 minus root 3 root 5 these are irrational number irrational number means if you try to write this number in the calculator or in anywhere this number goes forever in the decimal place you cannot stop anywhere <coughs> there is no end here this is the real algebraic but irrational mm, irrational these are rational this root 2 root 3 root 5 these are uh, irrational number and pi e this kind of special numbers this is called transcendental this is also irrational but we cannot write them in any algebraic form like this kind of root 2 we cannot write them in some any algebraic form they comes from different concepts but still we use them in our real in the in the mathematics that we discuss let's say they have some value 3.1416 e is 2.718 something and continues of course as usual this is also irrational this is also irrational irrational so all of them are the group of actually real number all of them are in the real number but they have some categories here so we will work with this find the rational zero theorem and in this class of course we will discuss them and irrational numbers appro approximate with the intermediate value theorem next class we will have some discussion about that so like how to find how to do the approximation about that by using the intermediate value theorem what is intermediate value theorem we'll discuss uh, just briefly here then we have detail in the coming class finding possible factors of the real zeros so basically uh, this is a long and serious task to find out the all the factors of a polynomial big polynomial function because uh, where do you start uh, what uh, we do about that uh, if we guess and check but how many numbers we can guess and check that's the problem uh, 
test all the numbers how many how many numbers we can check if we want to check uh, if you have a polynomial function by checking what we mean is let's say you have a polynomial function fx equals to um, some polynomial function whatever it is let's say fx equals to <coughs> x square minus x minus 6 so let's say here it is a very small one so you can test uh, one is it a is it a is it a zero of this polynomial function if you put one here if answer comes zero then it is a factor it is a, a zero you can test two here you can test three here you can test four here you can test minus one minus two minus three etc etc even sometimes half one by three one by four so how many numbers you'll test here that's the problem if we start guessing and checking so that's why we need some theory we need some idea before we start even how many answer we will have here do we know that so these are the idea here actually how many answer we will get we have actually we actually know about this so these are the list a polynomial cannot have more than more zeros than its degree so in this case degree is 2 but of course you will get uh, you will get polynomial we, uh, today's class also will see more more power here suppose power is 5 suppose maximum power is 5 degree is 5 then it means that for that question it is impossible to have six uh, zeros maximum five we will get if the degree is five then maximum we will get five so see this gives us some limitation this tells us that okay you got five that that's enough you will not get more so this question power is two that means you will get only two answer maximum maybe one also it's possible maybe maybe some no answer also possible but maximum two answer no answer means sometimes irrational comes that's why no answer so it cannot have more than uh, more than its degree polynomial of odd degree has at least one real zero real coefficient if the degree is odd here suppose 3 5 like etc then it will have at least one real zero then a polynomial has this one we will discuss in detail in the ne next slide uh, we'll discuss with the example then there are a couple of other theories uh, in the book you will see theorem of bounds on a zero like uh, how many uh, how do we know in between this number and that number uh, we have the zeros or not this theorem will tell us that intermediate intermediate value theorem will tell us in between two value suppose a and b is there any real zero or not suppose two and five you have two numbers you just choose two numbers then is there any real zero or not between two values intermediate value theorem tells us that Descartes rule of sign it depends on the change in sign in the function if there is some change in sign then do we get some positive or negative real zeros uh, real zeros uh, intermediate uh, De Descartes rule of sign will tell us that now all this theory here they will not give you exact answer they will give you idea one of the theory that gives us exact answer is this three number that's why you will see that we will be discussing this one again and again but for rigorous uh, math let's say you have a math where you have just like 20 or 50 terms or even 100 terms there like such a math you cannot complete writing the question in the whole board this kind of math also possible then actually all the theories comes into action because uh, then you will have to uh, we will have to of course we will not uh, we will not see that kind of uh, that kind of uh, maths uh, if we are not uh, like scientist in mathematics or or that level something someone because they are trying to solve the problems of mathematics that kind of thing so they actually need all the theories because they have to approximate they have to minimize the chances for very very big terms for very very big functions so all the theories helps a bit a bit a bit then together actually they gives us the they gives us the uh, answers so uh, you will see we will start investigating this three number a little deeper but uh, feel free to check others for if you are interested
this one uh, rational zero theorem <coughs> the same one that you have seen there what it says see rational zero theorem says that if you have a function like this this is your constant term this is uh, there is a variable here and this is the leading because x to the power n highest power and there is a coefficient here let f be a polynomial function of degree 1 or higher of the form this degree 1 or higher means x power is 1 or higher where each coefficient is uh, is an integer this a n a n minus 1 all this number has to be an integer it cannot be decimal it cannot be fraction something like 2 by 3 it cannot be like that <coughs> It has to be integer like 2 minus 2 5 these kind of numbers if P by Q is lowest terms is a rational zero of F then P must be a factor of a naught and Q must be a factor of a n P divided by Q so P is what P comes from a naught a naught means this number so this is the factor of a naught and this is the factor of a n so we will try to find out the factor of the last number and factor of the first number here then we will write them into like something divided by something something divided by something this something will come from here and the other something will come from here we have example with the numbers just just to give you the um, theory we are talking about we are talking now then again maybe another factor is here of a naught and another factor of a n is here so they are the possible combination there are there there can be a possible combination of zeros okay so that these numbers these numbers they will be the real zero they are the possible candidate let's say it this way they are the possible candidate of real zero all of them will not the answer we will check them which one is answer but they are the possible candidate of the answers let me show you that why it uh, what does it actually means <coughs> and how it works why it is true suppose a function is fx equals to 2x and this and this so what are the real zero of this function we know it from uh, the from the form x equals to minus a by 2 x equals to b by 3 x equals to c by 5 because if you write this equal to 0 then x equals to what that is the 0 now see if we multiply them then twice x 3x and 5x if you multiply it will become 30x cube it will become 30x cube and if you multiply a minus b and c it will become a b c dot 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 in the middle means there are tons of other things will come here in the middle we are not multiplying all of them because we need the last term and the first term what is happening in the middle will not hamper our uh, math as long as they are integer all of the numbers are integer as long as all the numbers are integer now see the so already we know that this is the like how we got these numbers this is the explanation of this and this is how we got the got these numbers just you multiply them now this theorem tells us p divided by q p is this 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 uh, abc and q is an these numbers so 30 is the 30 is the uh, q and p is, uh, th factor of this 30 is the q and factor of abc is p so see a b c this is above this is the numerator of the fraction a b c this last number will be the numerator top number and bottom number will come from the factor of this number this is what at least you should take from this theory <coughs> bottom number will come from this first numbers factor 
and up number will come from the factor of this last number now you can say sir this is 30 okay 2 is a factor how do you know because 15 into 2 equals to 30 so from 30 we get this 2 because 2 is a factor of 30 3 is also a factor of 30 3 is also a factor of 30 because 3 into 10 equal to 30 5 is also a factor of factor of 30 because 5 into 6 equals to 30 now you can ask me a question you can say okay then 10 is also a factor of 30 even not 10 even 6 is also a factor of 30 where is this 6 here so this is the point this is the point actually here there are many possible candidate from all of them few will be the answer and how to find out that few answers we have uh, continue continue uh, we will continue to investigate how to find out these few possible answers from a lot of candidate so uh, take away from here you should know that this from this 30 the factor of this 30 will give us the denominator here in our answer these all are actually zeros by the way this is these are the answer this answer will come from the factors of 30 will give us the denominator and the factors of this constant term will give us the numerator so let's look at the example look at this math now we have a real math here so 6 and 2 6 and 2 so now we know that this 2 and this 6 this is the fa uh, coefficient of the leading term and this is the coefficient of the factor this is the coefficient of the constant term what are the factors of 6 what are the factors of one, 2 so factors of 6 is 1 2 3 and 6 and they are negative numbers also like minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and minus 6 let me repeat again Factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now see uh, why they are factors. Because 1 into 6 equal to 6. 2 into 3 equal to also 6. But we will have to take the negative also. Positive and negative. Both of them. Because this positive 6 this ne say 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 negative 6 you can say sir why you are taking negative 6 let's say you take this combination minus 1 and minus 6 you multiply you get positive 6 so negative 1 and negative 6 also the factor of the 6 same explanation will go for minus 2 and minus 3 because minus 2 into minus 3 equal to 6 plus 6 that means in the process of in the process of our consideration we will have to take positive and negative of the factors all of them similarly what are the factors of 2 think about it this is easy 1 and 2 and they are positive and negative and they are positive and negative they are positive and negative so now we have the factors and what are the combination so we have written the factors of 6 are here factors of uh, 2 is here so these are the possible candidate these are possible um, candidate of answers because p divided by q we have our form p divided by q p divided by q p is the factors of p is the factors of this constant and q is the factors of this uh, leading coefficient <coughs> so you see <coughs> so you see I think it's cold let me drink some water I don't know or let's continue let's see if uh, 
If I start suffering again, then I'll go and drink water. Let's try to continue. So, <clears throat> so how do we get this? If you are, uh, if you are wondering, oh my God, how do how do you get all these things? Let me show you that. First of all, this whole line. These are the factor of six. We call them p. And because why we call them p? Because our answer will be p by q. p will be above, q will be down. And these are called q. q is the factor of this uh, leading coefficient. So, okay, let's consider first of all this whole line divided by the first one, which is 1. Okay, first one. So, you see, this will be like this one, this one, they will remain the same. Then, this whole line divided by the 2, then you will get this line divided by the 2. Each number you can divide by 2, so it is half, 2 divided by 1, that means this one, plus minus 3 divided by 2, so 3 by 2, plus minus 6 divided by 2, so plus minus 3, because 2 to cancel out. Yeah, 2 and uh, 6, we can do the cancellation, that's why. You can say, sir, oh my god, these are, these are complex. This is somewhat like this, as we said, this class is a little bit, uh, little bit going deeper. Of course, it is not true. I think you will agree. What does it mean? Suppose we, you understood this. Okay, we got it. We got it. Now, what does it mean? It means that the answer of these questions, the zero of these questions, they are the candidate candidates are these numbers. Maybe two is the answer. Maybe minus two is the answer. Zero, eh? real zero. Maybe 3 is a real 0 or maybe minus 3 is a real 0 of this question. We will, we will actually find out what is exactly the answer. We will find out. Now, why it is helpful? It is helpful in the way that we know for sure 5 is not the answer of this question. So, we will not have to test 5 for this question. We will not have to test 7. We will not have to test 8, 9, 10. So before this theory, we had tons and tons of numbers. Now our numbers are like limited. Now we know for sure, maybe from all, not maybe, these are the answers of this question. Now we know. Okay, so this is the usefulness of this theory. Let's go and find out this so this is like 5 we, we we know for sure that 5 is not the answer etc etc now let's continue first of all if we try to put try to check plus 1 is this answer here so we can just put x equals to 1 everywhere and see if it is 0 comes 0 comes means this is answer so use polynomial synthetic division or you can just test it uh, put 1 here to get the uh, zero. So if we do the synthetic division, you can see that if you even if you put one here, you will get the same answer. You will see that this answer zero zero is not coming here. Yeah. So if you put one, we get twelve here. That means there is a remainder. That means one is not an answer. Now we can try with minus one. Let's put minus one here in the x, or we can do the synthetic division with the minus one we see that a 0 comes. That means this minus 1 is actually a 0 of this given function. <coughs> so what I said here is you can do either in the synthetic division or even you can without the synthetic division. Let me show you that process. How can you do it? Let's say this, let's say this minus 1 that part because that came 0. This also we can show. This also we can show. So let, let, let me show you this part first, okay. 2, then 1 to the power 4, minus 7, 1 cube, minus 2, 1 square, plus 13 into 1, plus 6. So what we are doing here is we are putting everywhere 1. Then what we get here is 2, minus 7, minus 2, plus 13, plus 6, if you multiply it. Then what we get here is 
this is 13 13 plus 6 so 13 plus 6 equals to 16 19 19 plus 2 means 21 yeah so 13 plus uh, 2 means 15 6 21 then minus 7 plus uh, 7 minus 2 so this is 9 so this equals to as you can see 12 is coming here already so 12 this 12 remainder but if you put minus 1 in the question then what do you see 2 minus 1 to the power 4 minus 7 minus 1 cube plus i'm just showing you that this is there is another way to this is another way to instead of synthetic division this is another way to do it so minus 13 into 1 plus 6 from here we know that this will be positive because to the power 4 and this will become negative uh, this is negative here because cube then negative and negative becomes positive so it is 7 this is uh, 13 is negative then plus 6 so what we have here uh, did we miss anything 2 minus 7 Oh, minus 2x square we missed minus 2x square we missed so let's uh, write them also minus 7 after minus 7 we have minus 2 to here 1 whole square minus 1 whole square so basically that's a minus 2 as it seems yeah that's a minus 2 so there is a minus 2 missing here so we have it here okay then we have plus 15 plus 15 minus 15 plus 15 minus 15 means 0 that means for minus 1 this function is satisfied minus 1 is a real 0 so at least one answer we got minus 1 minus 1 is the answer if 0 comes that means that's an answer now if x minus 1 is if minus 1 is uh, for minus 1 we get it 0 then x plus 1 is a factor we know that if it is if the factor is x plus 1 then actually minus 1 if it is positive then negative number of of that factor is uh, the real zero if it is x plus 1 then a real zero is minus 1 if it is x plus 2 real zero is minus 2 okay that's why this is a factor so we just take it out then we have this thing you can uh, you can see it here you can see it here 2 minus 9 7 6 2 minus 9 7 6 so this term is coming from here then now we have a new question 2x cube minus 9x square plus 7x this so how do we do it this math is again we can use the same process you can say oh my god that's a huge task again we can see that this is 6 and this is 2 so if we take the factor of 6 if we take the factor of 2 then basically we can do the same calculation once again and we can try once again if it is repeated zeros you can check minus 1 here again 1 here again mm. then if it comes 0 then they can be a factor uh, they can be a 0 real 0 and from real 0 you can find out the factor then if it is not 0 actually in this case it's not 0 then we start with 2 nearest number then for 2 it comes 0 for plus 2 it comes 0 so minus 2 is a factor minus 2 is a factor when you take the minus 2 the remaining is this same process we will have to follow for this is smaller one then from this is smaller one we get this 2 then again we have another problem 2x square minus 5x minus 3 this is also quadratic so we will have to try to factor it and if we uh, you can do the middle term factoring here in this case so no problem uh, and if you do that do that we get we get this thing so from this uh, smaller part and our final answer of this question is 2x to the power 4 7x cubed minus 2x x squared plus 13x plus 6 in the factor form these are the factors these are the factors and real zeros are minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and minus half see one of the one of the minus half also came in the answer came in the answer <coughs> okay 
this is little bit little bit you it will take some time to take a couple of practice from yourself uh, to come to this point because uh, it it will uh, the math is little bit uh, engaging this kind of math a little bit engaging and they have a couple of steps to follow but once you get used to you will see that actually there are some other ways also like other ways means let's say you don't do the synthetic division here once you get this uh, once you know that by using that uh, plugging in once you know that for minus one it becomes zero then x plus one is a factor then by x plus one you can even divide long division also if you do the long division you will get this as answer but this is of course easier method this is easier method that method is also possible but that is actually long uh, lengthy method so but feel free to use whichever method you you are used to or you like this is in class practice then irreducible quadratic factors what are they first of all a similar one question first of all we test the possible zeros for the minus six then for my for this one is this one now we, we because it is one that's why they are the possible candidate because this is one so we have just only plus minus one now we check for plus one uh, plus one minus one plus two minus two plus three minus three just like the previous steps and we have found that minus one is a zero so x plus one is a factor then we write it here after the division then again three is also zero how do we know we put it here this three then x minus three must be factor then we are left with x square plus x plus two this is this is what is uh, ir irreducible here if you try to factor this small part here you cannot you will not get any answer you will not get any answer here because it is irreducible we cannot reduce it anymore we cannot reduce it anymore you can try to factor it by using the middle term factoring um, it will not come and we can see it in the graph there is no x intercept in fact when you find out this answer this uh, this this answer minus 1 3 these are actually x intercept and if you can find some answer from here they will be x intercept and from the graph we know that there is no x intercept for this small portion now you can say oh you know it from the graph but how you will know we do not have a graph during the exam we do not have a graph in real life everywhere we can find out by using um, quadratic formula you will see if you use the quadratic formula undefined comes or even if you just try to see let me show you the discriminant of this uh, part discriminant means my b square minus 4 ac so b a, a value is 1 a value is 1 b value is also 1 c value is 2 so 2 square minus 4 ac so a means uh, a means here 1 c means 2 oh b means actually b means 1 1 is square 1 is square 4 a c so this is 1 minus uh, 8 that means minus 9 the theory is if you get a negative number here then there is no x intercept for that part the theory is if b square minus 4 ac is is greater than 0 then there is two answer of this question there is two x intercept of that part if b square minus 4 ac is equal to 0 that means one answer of that question if b square minus 4 ac is negative number let that means less than 0 there is no answer in this case it is negative answer that's why there is no answer this is coming from quadratic uh, of course quadratic formula this is the discriminant of the quadratic formula without solving the math we can tell the answer this way by using this property so these kind of terms are called irreducible because we cannot reduce it anymore and then we will keep it here that's the conclusion but whether it is irreducible or not you will have to test it without testing don't say that oh my god this is maybe irreducible I, I should not do it anymore you should test it and these are the graphs these are the proofs that uh, these are the only we have two answers not no more than that okay no more than that solving quadratic polynomials uh, degree is greater than one so 
so if we give you the x value then fx finding is very easy suppose if x equals to 6 what is fx then actually you put x equals to 6 everywhere then you get some answer very easy easy task but if the y value is given if say we say that fx equals to 20 that means x cube minus 30 uh, 3x plus 20 equal uh, 3x plus 2 equals to 20 then it is harder to find the answer if x value is given you just put the already we have solved uh, in today's class also today's uh, lesson video also we have solved a lot of maths where we have put the value plugging in the value like 1 uh, minus 1 etc we tried but the for 6 also same method as you can see here so if x value is given then math is easy but if y value is given then your math is actually a little bit uh, harder so x cube minus 3x uh, plus 20 equals uh, plus 2 equals to 20 if it is given then what you will do you will have to do the same thing as we have done so far we will have to write x cube this 20 bring everything in one side then follow the uh, follow the process for finding the factors or zeros okay this kind of thing this will be the participation quiz uh, find all the real solutions of this question this will be the participation quiz and that's all for today. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everybody. And see you all in the class. Bye.